Is Louis Vuitton costume jewelry worth it? This is a two-year wear and tear review of my blooming supple necklace. Hi and very welcome! My name is Mary, this is my channel Lumi Level Up and I'm a luxury lover on an average income trying to be more mindful with my money. In these terms, getting the Louis Vuitton blooming supple necklace was a huge splurge. I already got mine more than two years ago when it still was a little bit cheaper. Really just a little bit, not a lot. I think it was around 380 at that time. It retails now for 405 euro and 600 US dollar. <sighs> when I say that out loud, it is a lot. Considering this is costume jewelry. It might look like gold, but it's definitely not. Well, not all that glitters is gold, I guess. It is brass. We have no idea what composition of copper and zinc it really is. Louis Vuitton doesn't tell us. And to be honest, I'm not an expert on metals anyways, so I couldn't tell you what kind of composition would be a considerably good one. But what I can tell you, brass is not considered a precious metal. When it comes to fine jewelry. And Louis Vuitton themselves, of course, categorizes these pieces as custom jewelry, not under the category jewelry, where you find the fine jewelry, because then it wouldn't be $600, it would be 6000 So the price tag on its own doesn't really speak for this fashion jewelry piece. I bet we've all seen these luxury YouTuber recommendation videos. Don't spend your money on designer custom jewelry. It's not worth it. For the money you can get a fine jewelry piece at the jeweler. And even though that absolutely might be true price-wise, isn't it the Louis Vuitton flowers and the LV monogram that gets our luxury lover heart beating faster. So let's take a closer look. Is this Louis Vuitton necklace worth it? How did it hold up after two years of wear? How often do I use it? How do I treat it? And would I personally recommend it and say it's worth it? Just for fun, I screened all of my YouTube videos. At this point in time, it's around 125. And in 25 of them, I've been wearing this necklace, which makes 20% of the times. And I feel like that's quite a good representation for how often I wear that piece. It's not an everyday piece for me, but I grab it over and over again and there is no other piece of jewelry you see that often on my channel. Well, other than my wedding ring, but that does not really count. And whenever I think the necklace suits my outfit, I go for it. Which is nearly always when there is not already going on too much with my shirt. So I don't mind if the necklace overlaps my shirt, like today. But if I would have some kind of embellishment or stuff here, I think it might get too much. But other than that, or when I wear items with silver hardware and combine it with silver jewelry, whenever it works with the necklace, I go for it. So I definitely did wear that necklace in the two years that I owned it. If we calculate, I wore it maybe once a week, which is around the 20% we calculated through my videos. Probably there were weeks when I wore it even way more often and probably there were weeks when I didn't wear it at all. But let's say it comes to about 50 wears a year and so about 100 plus wears since I have it. I do not shower with the necklace. I do not go swimming with the necklace. So no water, I wouldn't wear it to the beach or to a pool. But in summer, I use quite a lot of sunscreen. Of course, I try to wait till the sunscreen is soaked completely into my skin. But I wouldn't rule out that the necklace every now and then touched sunscreen skin. Same about perfume. Of course, I try to put on my perfume before I put on the necklace and try to wait till my skin is not damp anymore. But yet again, I couldn't rule out that there were times when I used perfume when I already had that necklace on. And that it did catch some sprinkles of perfume every now and then. So. For sure, I don't particularly baby that necklace. But I would say our neck itself is quite a safe spot where we usually don't catch up on things, which could happen with a bracelet, other than the contact with liquids and creams, perfume sprinkles, and maybe sweat. There is not really a risk of damaging the piece, I think. Oh, and sweat is quite a good point. I hope that's not too TMI. Of course, our neck and decolleté is not a place where we sweat like crazy. But I usually take that necklace with me on vacation as well, and then I wear it a lot on vacation. And when you are in the hot summer sun for hours, you might get a little bit sweaty everywhere. So I won't rule out either that that necklace got in contact with some sweat over the time I've used it. So let's finally take a closer, closer look at the necklace. I'm going to insert you up close shots here. 
My necklace might have the tiniest hairline scratches. So little that it's not even worth mentioning. I'm not even sure if the camera will pick up anything. There's nothing chipped, nothing tarnished, nothing discolored. The material didn't get dull. The necklace is nearly as good as new. It looks the way it looked when I got it. And it doesn't leave any green color on the skin, which some cheaper brass material pieces do when they oxidate. It doesn't happen with that necklace or the bracelet at all. So the brass material Louis Vuitton uses actually seems to be better quality than the material of many cheap costume jewelry pieces. But does that justify the price? Honestly, I think I can't decide that. It's up to you, if you think it's worth it for you. The material for sure doesn't cost $600. And the craftsmanship neither. But I don't regret at all getting the Blooming Subtle necklace. And even though it has such a hefty price tag, it is worth it for me, because I love the piece like crazy. And it held up perfectly. There are no mentioning worthy signs of wear and tear at all after two years of using it and not even thinking about. Do I want to wear it? Do I have to be careful with the piece? I just put it on and wear it whenever I want to. I think it is the perfect combination of trendy and classic and it plays with the design elements of my favorite design house Louis Vuitton, the little flowers, the monogram. And I personally think it is such a statement piece. I probably wouldn't get a second golden Louis Vuitton necklace in that same length because the price is high and with another one I would just minimize the times I wear that one. And wearing it quite often, 20% of the times, it's just a good justification for myself that the piece was actually worth the price for me. I'm not averse maybe getting a silver Louis Vuitton necklace one day, if it holds up that well as well. But since silver colored costume jewelry probably has a different combination of metals, it might wear different than the golden brass. So I would have to do quite some research beforehand to make a decision if another costume jewelry Louis Vuitton necklace would be worth it for me. Last year, because I love that necklace so much, I went for the matching Blooming Supple bracelet, which I feel slightly different about than about the necklace. But if you're interested in why and to hear even more about the Louis Vuitton fashion jewelry, we can cover that in its own video and do a one and a half year wear and tear review on the bracelet. Do you own any Louis Vuitton fashion jewelry? And do you love it as much as I do? Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time and bye. I'm sweating. It is super hot and I don't know why I went for a piece with long sleeves. <laughs> is Louis Vuitton costume... Is Louis... Is Louis Vuitton costume... Costume? I think it was around 100... If the camera will... will if the camera... To watch next, I will recommend you my entire Louis Vuitton playlist and here you can subscribe.